Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We are in 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're looking at verse 21 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. As we get into verse 21, Paul here says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Now, the natural tendency when we read this verse is to interpret this verse as referring to either saved or unsaved people. And a key word in this, in this verse is the word these. So he says here, if a man therefore purge himself from what? From these. Now, what is Paul talking, referring to when he says these? Is he referring to these empty, uh, unholy talkers of verses 16 to 18 that we already studied a few lessons ago? Or does the these talk about the earth and wood vessels of verse 20, the previous verse? And we don't know because Paul doesn't specify uh, which is he's talking about. Maybe he's talking about both of them. But regardless of which one he's talking about, if a Christian cleanses and stays away from, from the, these, whatever they're referring to, and, and honors God in their life, then they will be a vessel unto honor, set apart and made useful for God's use and prepared unto every good work. So Paul here says to Timothy, if a man therefore purges himself from these, and if let, let's include both the unholy vain talkers and the wood and earth vessels, then if we cleanse ourselves from these, we can be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for God's use for whatever use he calls us to. So it's important that we purge ourselves from these. Now, it does not mean it does not mean that we refrain from, you know, you can't go to work anymore because <laughs> there's unholy people there or you can't, you know, you can't go shopping in the store anymore. No, it doesn't mean that. What he means is that we 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 are in this world, but we are not to be of this world. We are not to be uh, um, caught up with the mentality of this world system. We are, uh, Philippians 3.20, our citizenship is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship is in heaven and we need to think heaven's thoughts. We need to live on this earth as a citizen of heaven. But what about Christians? What about Christians who don't purge themselves from the these? They are not so willing to give up the things of this world or the things uh, in their flesh as other people are, as other Christians are. They are saved, but they don't hunger and thirst after God as other Christians do. So what about them? So he says here, he, he starts off in verse 21 with the word if. If is conditional clause and it means maybe you will, maybe you won't. If a man therefore purges himself from these, right? He shall be a vessel unto honor. But not everyone, not every Christian is so willing to want to purge themselves from the things of this world. They don't, they don't attain, what, say, what kind of a vessel will they be? 
What kind of a vessel will a Christian be who loves God, they go to church, but they don't, certain things in their life, they don't want to give up. There's certain, certain th worldly things that they don't want to stop doing. And, and for whatever reason, they don't want to go forward with God in that area of their life. What kind of vessel will they be? Because he says in verse 20, but in a great house, there are, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth. Now, I read some commentaries and they said that the gold and silver all, uh, always pertains to saved people. Saved people. They will be gold and silver, right? And wood and earth vessels, well, they're, they're people who go to church, but they're not saved. They go to church, and, and but they haven't given their hearts to Christ. They're wood and earth people, all right? Well, so does that mean that a Christian who, who still dabbles in the world, are they going to be a gold and silver vessel? No, right? This is why I said, this is why I said that the wood and the earth vessels of verse 20 does not always have to refer to unsaved people. You have some Christians that are going forward with God and they're, they're dying to this world and they're living unto God. Well, they're going to be a gold and silver vessel. But what about, a, what about a person who gets saved? They, they, they go to church, they, but they don't want anything more to do with God. They don't want, they don't want to really like pray, really uh, develop a prayer life. They don't want to develop a study life, reading the Bible life. They, they're maybe not interested in Bible study. You know, they love God and they got saved, but they don't, there's certain things in their life they just don't want to stop doing. They don't want to give them up uh, for God or for his word. Are they going to be gold and silver? Well, no. Wood, wood and earth, it's still a vessel for God that God can use. But they don't attain the gold and silver level. Don't assume when you read verse 21 that every single Christian in this world wants to purge themselves as you do or as other faithful Christians do. Just not everyone wants to. Some, they come to church and, and, and they love God and they sing and they enjoy it. And then the rest of the week, well, they go out and they do, they want to live their life. They want to live life the way they want to. They don't want, they don't want to, they don't want to give their life to God every day. They don't mind doing it Sundays and, and maybe once in a while uh, going to a Bible study. But Mondays through Saturdays, it's their time. It's their time. And, and, and they, they, they've decided that's all I want of God. So, so he says here, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. And that's true. This is Paul encouraging Timothy and this is God, through his word, encouraging all of us, telling us that if you, listen, if you die to this world, if you mortify the, the deeds of your body, as it says in uh, Colossians 3, verse 5, if we put to death the things of this world and we die to the things of this world and live unto God, God says through here that we will be a vessel unto honor in his kingdom. And this is this should encourage us to want to hunger and thirst after being a, an honor, to be an honorable vessel unto him. This should encourage us to want to seek the things above and not the things on this, to love not the world, but to love God and the things of heaven. So he says, you be, uh, shall be a vessel unto honor, 
sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Now, this Greek word for prepared means to be made ready or to be equipped. So he says, if we purge ourselves from this world system, then we will be equipped. We will be prepared and made ready unto every good work. Now, this brings up uh, an, an interesting topic concerning our walk with God. And it has to do with the Christian's preparedness. Christians need to live and live a prepared life. In our, in our portion of scripture here in, in uh, 2 Timothy 2, verse 21, Paul states that preparedness must be, must be preceded by purging the heart from unholy, useless babblings that come from people whose hearts are not dedicated to God. So being prepared unto God starts with doing away with unholy babblings, all right, from useless, useless talks, from, from dying to the things of this world. So this is what Paul describes as being a useful vessel, not to get, not to spend a lot of time talking about useless stuff, unholy things. The life of the Christian should be one of a continual daily drawing away from the lusts and the pleasures of a world that is passing away and should be daily drawing closer to their eternal home in heaven. And that's the way, it, that's the way our life should be. Every day, we should be living our life drawing closer to going home drawing closer to our citizenship, our, our heavenly home, not drawing closer to this world. This world's passing away. God's going to, God's going to, second Peter chapter three, God is going to burn all of this. He's going to set it all on fire and he's going to purge it and cleanse it. This is all going to pass. Everything you see with your eyes is going to pass. And 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 second second Corinthians second Corinthians chapter second Corinthians chapter four verse seventeen for our light affliction which is but for a moment works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why? What? Now listen. While we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporal. The things which are seen are temporal. Everything that you see with your eyes is temporal, right? Things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are unseen are eternal. The things which are unseen are eternal. So we need to get our minds, we need to set our hearts on the unseen world, the unseen world of God's kingdom. This is temporal. This is all going to pass. The shape of this world is all going to go away. And, and it, it's, it's all... It, don't, don't be drawing your heart closer to things that are passing away and and eventually things that will will be destroyed if the christian dedicates their life to god then god will set them apart set them apart means god sanctifies them and he will set them apart for his special use and they will be equipped for whatever god calls them to do I think every Christian wants to wants to be useful for God, but we need to be prepared before we before we can be used. Before God can use us, we need to be a prepared vessel unto God. 
And preparedness only happens when we daily purge out the things in our life and in our heart that are not like God. The purging has to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Don't try to do the purging in your own flesh. Today, I'm going to purge myself. I just woke up. It's uh, six o'clock in the morning and I've got a full day ahead of me. I think I'll purge myself. <laughs> Good luck. It ain't going to work. Don't trust in your flesh to purge yourself. God, don't worry. I can handle this. I'll purge myself. You'll see how clean I can get, right? <laughs> no, you're, you're, as soon as you step out of bed, you, you failed already. You're going to fail right away. No, purging has to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. So don't trust in yourself to purge yourself. When, when, when he says that we need to, pur when he says here, verse, if a man therefore purge himself of these, Paul isn't saying, you know, you need to purge yourself and God is expecting you to purge yourself. No, because God knows we can't purge ourselves. We can't cleanse ourselves. We can't, you know, uh, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. So we get up in the morning, we pray, Father, I'm going to the, out into this world today to work or to whatever. Father, just through the Holy Spirit, help me. Uh, help me to think with you. Help me to speak for you. Help me to hear, uh, hear your words and, and, and to, to, to be careful the things that I see, the things that I hear. And, and to make, make good decisions today. I need the Holy Spirit to help me to make good decisions today. Decisions that are according to your word, according to your heart. And the Holy Spirit does. But don't try to do it in your own flesh. It's going to, you're going to fail. So when he says here, let's go back over this verse. If a man therefore purge himself from these, if that, which means if we choose to deny ourselves in this life, if we choose to seek the things of God and to, and, and to draw closer to God and draw farther away from the lusts and the pleasures of this world, then you will be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, set apart. God will set you apart. Set you apart and you will be prepared. You will be equipped. God will, because you've set yourself apart, God will equip you for whatever he's called you to do today and in your life in the future. But it only comes by a purged heart. An unpurged heart isn't going to be set apart by God and you're not going to be equipped unto every good work. All right, until next lesson, Walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.